preparing to ascend to the highest office in the land called America. The Roman Catholic statesman from an imaginary land called Camelot addressed the Commonwealth of his birth, saying, I speak neither from false provincial pride nor artful flattery. For no man about to enter high office in this country can ever be unmindful of the contributions which this state has made to our national greatness. Its principles have guided our footsteps in times of crisis and times of calm. Its democratic institutions have served as beacon lights for other nations as well as for our sister states. But whatever contributions the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may have brought, it remains a fact that the oldest democratically elected legislature in the New World, established on July 30th, 1619, was in Virginia. Whatever contributions the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may have brought, the Statement of Rights adopted by the Commonwealth of Virginia in 1776 formed the basis of the Bill of Rights that were ratified to adopt the nation's constitution. And whatever contributions the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may have brought, it remains a fact that John F. Kennedy, who delivered proudly that famous City on a Hill speech to his Commonwealth, today is not buried in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, where he hoped his grandchildren might one day be born, but in the Commonwealth of Virginia, beneath a hill in a cemetery where sits atop the former home of a man named Robert E. Lee. Yet despite the fact that the First Amendment expressly provides that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances on December 2nd, 2017 in the Commonwealth of Virginia were subjected to an arrest in which we were called protesters in just six minutes and arrested in a trespass in progress because it was said that we were praying out loud, singing religious songs and laying on the floor of an abortion mill, which is the second busiest in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Despite the fact that the Fourth Amendment expressly provides that the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized, there is substantial corroborating evidence to support the conclusion that that arrest in just six minutes was the consequence of illegally performed searches and seizures. Despite the fact that the Fifth Amendment expressly provides that no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, forming since 1966 the basis for the standard police Miranda warning, there is substantial corroborating evidence that law enforcement officers from the Alexandria Police Department disregarded the Miranda warning they had just read to defendants, which advised their arrestees of a right to remain silent and a right to an attorney to avoid self-incrimination. And there exists incontrovertible evidence that law enforcement officers from that police department ignored the Miranda warnings on their standard issue cards and actively engaged to interrogate Red Rose rescuers who came in profession of faith to save lives of unborn children and assist the salvation of their mothers in an attempt to compel them to incriminate themselves. Despite the fact that the Sixth Amendment expressly provides that in all criminal prosecutions the accused shall enjoy a public trial by an impartial jury of the state and the district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law, the sole person who continued through appeal to obtain that constitutional right was convicted in absentia at a trial that was held without his knowledge. Despite the fact 
as the Sixth Amendment expressly provides that in all criminal prosecutions the accused shall be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation. There is indisputable evidence that all of the persons convicted were never apprised of the religious behaviors about which the abortion mill had complained to police that caused their arrest. And upon discovery of this exculpatory evidence, the court went so far as to engage in willful blindness, corroborated, documented, and proven to avoid reviewing that evidence so that it might continue to work a prejudice against the defendants in the appellate trials. Despite the fact that the Sixth Amendment expressly provides that in all criminal prosecutions the accused shall enjoy the right to be confronted with the witnesses against him, the Alexandria Women's Health Clinic, with the joint cooperation of both police and the courts, refused to comply with a validly issued and served subpoena. Despite the fact that the Sixth Amendment expressly provides that in all criminal prosecutions the accused shall enjoy the right to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, the Alexandria Women's Health Clinic, an abortion mill, the second busiest in the state, with the joint cooperation of the police and the courts, evaded court-sanctioned discovery practices to conceal the identities of persons at the scene of the arrest who may have assisted in their defense. Despite the fact that the Eighth Amendment expressly prohibits excessive fines imposed and freedom from the sufferance of cruel and unusual punishments inflicted, the Commonwealth Attorney for the City of Alexandria issued fines for at least $1,000 for an alleged trespass event that lasted less than six minutes before police from ten minutes away had arrived, and where the abortion facility manager met the Red Rose rescuers at the door and informed them that the police were already called, and where there was, contrary to law, no evidence of any complaining patron nor disruption of business in an abortion mill that continued to accept clients throughout the 43-minute ordeal of extraction that summoned the armada of an estimated 20 law enforcement officers, three police cars, and emergency service vehicles and personnel. Moreover, the Commonwealth Attorney expressly demanded that the court exact a fine of $500, two times the fine she had just recommended for a criminal convicted of marijuana possession, and only because of what she described as the inconvenience that he had caused that city. Yet under the laws of Virginia, even if found to have occurred, inconvenience is no codified crime, misdemeanor, nor felony. Despite the fact that the Ninth Amendment expressly provides that the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people, and despite the fact that the Tenth Amendment expressly provides that the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. And despite the fact that the 14th Amendment, which was passed immediately after a great civil war that emancipated approximately 3 million persons, formerly held captive in the peculiar institution of chattel slavery, expressly provides that no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. Not only did Alexandria City Circuit Court convict a Red Rose rescuer in absentia at a trial that he was not even invited to attend, not only did that same court do so in contravention to federal law that prohibited it from doing so, while a petition for removal to federal district court was pending, but that federal district court, after three months of inaction on a matter that is supposed to be granted highest priority, summarily repealed the 150-year-old provision of civil rights law that permitted that criminal defendant in a malicious prosecution to remove himself to that federal court. Does one vote count? Can one man make a difference? Is Virginia for lovers? Does Jesus care? Give faith a try and expect miracles. And please be patient with me. God is not through.
with me yet. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me, God. Not unmindful of the future is the motto of Washington and Lee University. My name is Major Mike Webb, and I am running for U.S. Congress. In liberty, with honor and excellence, the South shall rise again. Honest. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb.